Hello everybody, welcome to our lesson. Today we will solve a problem on the topic Lenz's law. So this is the goal of the lesson. At the end of the lesson you will be able to apply the Lenz's law. Now before we start solving problems it will be useful to recall the Lenz's law. So Lenz's law states that the current induced in a circuit due to a change in a magnetic field is directed to oppose the change in flux. So it means if the flux is increasing, the induced field must decrease it. And if the flux is decreasing, the induced field must increase the flux. Now, okay, this is the first problem. And we see that the bar magnet is moving towards a coil. And this is the field from the bar magnet. And the flux inside the coil must increase and by the Lenz's law the coil must set up a magnetic field which will oppose the change in flux so it must decrease the flux that's why magnetic field is opposite to the existing field and if we know the direction of the mag induced magnetic field we can find the current by the second right hand rule and we know that second right hand rule states we must point our thumb into the direction of the field and the current here we see it will be with the direction of the fingers and we see that our fingers is curled anti-clockwise. So that's why the current is anti-clockwise. So here we go. Current is flowing and we see that through the resistor current is directed to the left so the right answer is the first option now let's move to the second problem here we see that a loop is dropped through a constant magnetic field and we are asked to find the induced current on each of these situations if it exists of course let's start solving by the first situation. In the first situation, the flux is not changing. That's why there is no current. And in the second situation, we see that the loop is entering the field. That's why flux through the loop is increasing and the current must decrease, must be set up such to decrease the flux. So if we draw a loop, we see that it is now entering the magnetic field and the magne induced magnetic field must decrease this change in flux and to do this it must set up an opposite field and by this by the first right hand rule sorry by the second right hand rule we can find the direction for the current we see it is anti-clockwise the direction of the current is anti-clockwise. And the third situation, the flux is also zero here because the field is not changing. It's uniform field and it's inside that field. That's why current is again zero here. And at the fourth situation, the loop is just about to leave a magnetic field. That's why flux must decrease and if we draw a loop, here we see that loop is just about to leave the magnetic field and flux is decreasing. That's why induced field must increase the change in flux. So to do that, it must set up a field with the direction of the existing field. And by applying the second right hand rule, we can find the direction for the current. 
it is we see now clockwise now the last situation is identical with the first situation there is no change in flux that's why current is zero so what we have at first situation there is no current at the second situation current is anti-clockwise at the third there is also no current and at the fourth situation current is opposite it's clockwise and at the last situation again no current so that's it let's move to the third problem we see the identical situation here but it's a bit different because it enters and leaves not the same field with the direction so we know from the previous lesson if current is flowing around current we have a magnetic field circular magnetic fields but i'm not going to draw a circle i'm just going to draw the direction which relates to the table so from the top of the current we have a direction of the magnetic field which is upwards and bottom of the current has direction which is downwards so let's draw a top view to have a better sense here is the loop and this is the current and through that current we have sorry this is the wire and through that current we have a current and now let's draw the field here it is pointed toward us here it is pointed from us now in first situation the flux is increasing so that's why magnetic field must decrease the change in flux to do it it must set up a field opposite with the direction of the existing field and from the right hand rule we can find the direction for the induced current it is clockwise now the second situation what do we have here again we have a current through the wire and the coil is leaving the magnetic field and here we have a field which is directed from us now in this situation flux is decreasing because it's leaving the field and that's why induced magnetic field must be such to increase the change in flux and it must set up its direction the same with the existing field so again from the right hand rule we can find the direction for the current it is we see also clockwise here so that's it in both situations the current induced directed clockwise now let's move to the fourth problem and it is the last problem what do we see here we see a rectangular coil of area 0.5 meters squared area is 0.5 meters squared and the field is 0.2 teslas and the loop is rotated from horizontal to the vertical position in an interval of time 0.05 seconds and we are asked in A part to find magnitude of the induced EMF in the loop and in the B part we asked to find both the magnitude and the direction 
of the induced current and we know the resistance, it's 4 ohms. So, let's start with the A part. We use here equation for the induction, the Faraday's equation. And the number of loop is 1 and we must find the change in flux. So change in flux is final flux minus initial flux. So at an initial state, the loop was on the horizontal position and the plane and the magnetic field lines align it. So that's why the flux must be zero. And when it is turned to a vertical position, the flux is maximum and it can be found by multiplying the field to the area. So if field is 0 0.2 and if area is 0 0.5 meters square, then the flux, final flux is 0 0.1 Tesla. So the change in flux is 0 0.1 minus 0. 0.1 Tesla. Now, let's apply all the givens to the Faraday's law. So, phi EMF is equals to minus 1, change in flux is 0 0.1, and the interval of time is 0 0.05. And the answer is, we see, minus 2 volts. Now, B part. We can find the magnitude by using the Ohm's law. The voltage, in this case EMF, over resistance. 2 over 4 is 0 0.5 amperes. Now what about the direction? Here we use the Lenz's law and we see if the position is changed from horizontal to the vertical, the flux is increasing and the magnetic field, induced magnetic field must decrease it. It must be in the opposite direction of the existing field. And by applying the first right hand rule, we can find the direction of the current. So I will use this segment of wire. And we see here that here we have a field which enters the plane and here we must have field which is out of the loop. Now, it is obvious that the current is in this direction. So let's see where it will go, this direction. And here, this. And we see that the through the resistance, the direction of the current chooses the second option. So right answer is the second option. Well, this is the end of the lesson and I hope you've enjoyed solving problems with us. And if you like our video, please subscribe and share. Thank you.